Hey, Dr. Versalati here, and in this screencast, we're going to go over how to solve morphology problems. How do we analyze words in a language we don't know? Well, we're going to use the linguistic technique of isolating and comparing forms. So we're going to compare the translations and the words and we're going to look for forms that are partially similar. We're going to look for a common meaning. Remember that if a specific form has two different meanings, it's not going to be the same morpheme. And if a, mor a morpheme can, however, have the same meaning in the same context and have very similar forms, that's called, those are called allomorphs, when there's two forms of one morpheme. And after we isolate and compare and we think we have figured out what the morphemes are in that language, we're going to always check our hypothesis by reviewing all of the data to make sure what we think is happening is happening throughout the data because linguistics is all about finding patterns. And there's a hint there to be open and flexible in your thinking because there's a lot of variety across languages. Okay, let's start with the first one. Um, here are some uh, words in a particular language. This happens to be Farsi. Uh, we're, we can see that we have the word in Farsi and then the English translation. So we're just going to look at these words and see if we can figure out what the morphemes are. How do we do that? Well, we're going to compare. Oh, I see woman and women. So this is the singular form and this is the plural form. This is the singular form. This is the plural form. I'm starting to notice a pattern, right? Singular form, plural form. Do you see it too? So the plural marker in this language seems to be um, a suffix, an, right? Now we're going to, um, we've isolated, we've compared, we're com we've compared and isolated. Now we're going to check our hypothesis. Is that the plural marker in all of them? Well, let's look over here. Um, it doesn't quite follow the same pattern. Let's let's think about this. Notice that um, the nouns on the right side end in an a, a vowel, and when the the noun ends in a vowel, a different ending is put on to make the plural. But notice that the forms are very similar. You don't have to get into this, but I would assume that having two vowels together makes it hard to hear. So they insert the ya sound represented by the letter J here. So we have the plural marker has two forms and we say that these are allomorphs and um, this morphological process is affixation, specifically a suffix, just like it is in English. This example is important because we, it is a good reminder to check the data and make sure that your hypothesis works throughout. Now let's look at this data. Um, what do we see? Well, when we're looking at the meanings, we see that we have he looked, he died, he plants it, he looks, he laughs, it tears, he dies. So one thing we can consider is if we can tell a difference between the verbs that are in present tense. In English, those are marked with a s and verbs that are in the past tense, which we mark with the d. So let's compare. Do you see a pattern? What the morpheme might be? What the affix might be that marks tense, simple, um, present and past tense in this language? 
so it looks like when we compare he looked and ends in an oo and when it when the verb means he looks it ends in a pa right the ken is the same the only difference is that suffix so it looks like we have figured out that that is the pattern we have compared he looked with he looks and he died with he dies and we see that pattern but we always have to check the data so let's make sure that that pattern is uh, consistent right linguistics is about consistency is that true for every other uh, verb yes when we check through we can see that he laughs ends in the pa it tears and he it cooks the pattern is consistent and we see that again this is affixation and it's a suffix but there's something else going on in this data. Let's look. Uh, are there any other forms or meanings that are similar that we could compare? We have pata, mat, and we have his mat, which is a little bit different. And the same with belt and his belt. So what's happening here? We know that we know the morpheme for mat and we know the morpheme for belt. How do we make, how do we show the possession of his? Well, it looks to be an infix. And specifically, where does it go? It gets inserted after the first consonant. Um, again, this is a type of affixation that we really don't see in English, but we have an example here. And that, um, so then if we wanted to create um, the phrase his cornfield, we could take the noun cornfield and insert the infix, and that's how we do it. So. Just as a reminder, we're going to compare forms and that are similar. We're going to compare meanings that are similar. We're going to make a hypothesis and then check our hypothesis. And be ready for things that you might not expect. <laughs>